Hi again, everyone. As Arna said, I'm going to have a quick introduction in deploy steps. I don't have many slides, but I do have a, a large blog post and a lot of and a bit of code to show you. So I'll try to spend some time showing you a real example of how this can work. And you, of course, can uh, read the blog post for details. The link will be in the end of the slides. Um, my name is Dmitry, so who don't know me, I work for Red Hat, I'm principal software engineer currently on the OpenShift team. Uh, you can subscribe me to, on Twitter and uh, there is a link to these slides if you want to follow them later on. Um, with that, let's uh, get started. For those who remember Ironic, say three, four years ago, uh, the deployment looked roughly like this. You prepare a Pixie boot, the RAM disk starts, magic, 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 a lot of like very uh, complex and uh, sometimes spaghetti code. And the node is rebooted, you are done. That's great, but um, over the time we've uh, received numerous requests for extensibility or at least for a way to understand what exactly is going on, but mostly to be able to plug that in. So uh, the deploy steps work was uh, concluded to make this magical step uh, transparent and more importantly uh, to be able to insert your code or your options into this process. Um, yeah, so I mentioned the idea is to split one big deploy function for those who remember the deploy interface in Ironic, there's one deploy function that does everything and uh, into steps and then to be able to insert custom steps between them. When I'm talking about deploy steps, I'm talking about two kinds of them. Uh, out of band deploy steps are steps that executed via the BMC or anyway from the control plane, not from inside the machine. And in band deploy steps on the opposite are executed from within the RAM disk. Um, they ordered according to the priority, we're using uh, the setting priority. So uh, the, the biggest, the earliest. Uh, and uh, we have split uh, our deploy process into these six, uh, five to six steps actually, not all drivers implement all of them. But uh, when you're doing direct deployment, for example, this is the most fundamental steps that will be executed. They are built into Ironic and uh, will be executed by deploy, de default. Deploy, deploy, uh, this unfortunate name is because of backward compatibility. So with this uh, previous uh, monolithic deploy step, it has priority of 100 and it's the only thing it does now right now is prepare, deploy and start the RAM disk. So uh, contrary to its name, it doesn't actually deploy anything. What does deploy something is a step called write image executed with uh, priority 80. Um, for iSky, the deployment which we are currently deprecating, it's uh, actually out of band. For the direct deploy, it's an in-band step. It runs from within the RAM disk. Uh, then we have prepare instance boot, which uh, sets up bootloader and boot device. It's partially, uh, partly um, in band, but uh, the step itself is out of band, but it does go into the RAM disk. Then we tear down agent at, at priority 40, switch to tenant network at 30, and boot the final instance at 20. So when we'll be talking about custom deploy steps, you have to mind these uh, standard priorities because your step has to be inserted somewhere between them. If it happens uh, before deploy, deploy, so if the priority more than 100, your step will be run before the node uh, starts uh, the RAM disk. So that's a good place for doing some out of band action. I don't know, out of band raid maybe. Uh, if you need to modify the image that already exists, you probably want to put your step after right image. So for example, with 70 or 50. Uh, if you want to modify um, uh, something that uh, ha has anything to do with bootloader, it probably has to go before 60. And if you need the RAM disk to be running, it has to go before 40. And by before, I mean larger than. There is even an opportunity to run deploy steps after the final instance started booting. So if your priority is lower than 20, but don't use zero because zero means disabled. Uh, custom steps that I mentioned, they can be coming, coming from the RAM disk, in-band steps or out-of-band. Uh, so from the uh, from the node's driver, or more precisely from either its hardware 
from one of these hardware interfaces. Uh, in band steps are provided by an IPA hardware manager. I'm going to show you one today. And usually use priority 99 to 41 because as I explained, uh, you need RAM disk to be booted. So this is a priority range you can use. Uh, next, I'll show you uh, some code and some examples how it was code was used. I didn't have time to record the video, but I do have a, quite a bit of text. Uh, the links are here. I will start probably showing you how an in-band deploy step works. I hope when I switch the tab, you still see something. Um, yes. Not here. Um, so we, here we see, uh, I'll probably make a font larger. Is it visible? Yes, looks good. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, this is the hardware manager. Hardware manager are plugability bits of Ironic Python agent. They can be used to plug, uh, to change a lot of aspects. One of them is this get deploy steps call, which is a standard call that returns the deploy steps implemented by this hardware manager. As always with hardware managers, you don't ha have to repeat whatever is already provided by other hardware managers. You just, only the stuff we need. So that's our hardware manager. It has a name, it has version. It has a very high hardware support, which makes it uh, have a high priority. And we create, we define one step. It's part of the deployment interface. It has the name inject files, which corresponds to a method we define. Priority zero means it won't run automatically. If you put here, for example, 70, it will run after writing the image, but before setting up the bootloader. Uh, it can request reboots, it can be abortable, and it re receives one argument, which is required. So this argument goes here in the signature after node and ports, which are standard arguments. Uh, I won't really explain what is going on in this particular particular deploy step, it injects files, but uh, you can read my blog post for more details. But this is a structure that you create to write a deploy step. And then uh, in its metadata, you define an entry point in the main namespace, Ironic Python agent hardware managers. And that's it. You install these packages on your Ironic Python agent RAM disk, all hardware managers are loaded automatically. Your deploy step will be recognized. Uh, if its priority is more than zero, it will be run automatically. If its priority is zero, or if you want to change that, you can use deploy templates. Uh, I'll use just snippets from my blog post because it's easier. So a deploy template is uh, a, uh, an ability to modify the deployment process that is associated with a trade name. So uh, here, for example, I'm creating a trade name custom inject files, and I'm associating a deploy template with it with uh, the following deploy steps. As you see, it's again interface deploy, the same name. Now I'm setting priority of 50. So this, ste this step will now be run, its priority is written, and provide some arguments, doesn't matter which. Uh, now we have a deploy template. If we add a trait to a node with the same name, We'll say, ironic, that this node is capable of executing this deploy template during deployment. So when during deployment we request this trait, and I'm using Metal Smith because it's much shorter, uh, our, it, uh, Metal Smith writes it in instance info, like this, instance info traits list. Ironic checks that yes, this node is actually capable of running, of uh, using this trait. Uh, I'm using allocations for that, but we can do it manually. And the matching deploy template will be applied. So at priority 50, this deploy template will now be run. Uh, out of band deploy templates are writing in a similar fashion. Uh, uh, I probably can show you something. Excuse me, I haven't prepare this part in advanced. Uh, uh, but for example, let's uh, take Redfish, let's take management, and I think it has at least as a clean step. Okay, it has a clean step, but deploy step, it looks exactly the same. 
this is uh, to update firmware. Maybe it actually have deploy steps too. It, it doesn't, Dimitri. It doesn't, so is it even secure boot? Oh, that's different, sorry. I'm okay, sorry. secure boot actually has a deploy step, priority zero, no arguments, nothing else. You can write that. Or there is a clean step, which we uh, marked above. For update images, it has arguments. So when you request that, you have to provide these arguments. And the clean steps work in a similar fashion to deploy steps. So it will be just here, deploy step instead of clean step. Um, what do I want to tell you? Uh, yeah, my blog post contains information on how to build an ironic Python agent image with your custom hardware manager. I won't repeat that here because it's a bit long. And that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. I have one. Sure. Um, so you, you mentioned, um, you know, you could do out of band deploy steps um, early on. So can you do it then before the RAM disk boots? Yeah, the RAM disk is booted uh, on the deployed.deploy .deploy step. So RAM disk is booted here. If you have priority higher than 100, it will be executed before the RAM disk is booted. Okay, and is that a fairly recent change or has that been the case for a long time? That's the case for deploy steps, but not for clean steps. I think ah. you're referring to clean steps, which have this problem that is not fixed yet. Deploy okay. steps have been designed like that from the beginning. I think there were some issues running before. Uh, I had a bug in Storyboard, but Storyboard is now down. But the issue was that uh, because server starts booting, there's a bit of race. What happens first, RAM disk already running or the out of band step has completed or not. But like, yeah, I have to wait for Storyboard to come back. So maybe it's not like reliable in all cases. Okay, yeah, we need to check, but the idea is this. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Thank you very much, Dimitri. Are there more questions for Dimitri? I have one then. Dimitri, the, like, you showed that the, the, the framework, the whole framework seems like to have like maximum flexibility in what you can do before the rundus starts, during the rundus, um, when the rundus runs. Um, I was wondering if, they, if you also plan to have, or if there's already something where you have something like very simple where people can just, or operators or users can just inject something like a script that's executed, something like, um, uh, without like doing a script, uh, sorry, without doing their own step. You see what I mean? So similar to like a script that you can append to to cloud in it as user data, just something where you upload a script or like pass on the script that's then executed while the IPA is running. I see what you mean. No, we don't have this plan. Actually, the in-band steps work was finished only in Victoria, so this is pretty much re pre pretty recent. Mm -hmm. No, I was just wondering because I think that most things probably will be or could be done within some kind of script. And I have another question about this, but this would like kind of the, the threshold for users to use this, like make, make it very low, very easy to use if they just can say, okay, this is my script that I want to like to execute when the, when the node is running or when the IPA is running rather than like, like hooking something, like build the whole step and hooking this into the deploy. Um, step framework. Yeah, I understand. On the other hand, we don't currently have stable internal API in mm -hmm. Ironic Python agent. We have Ironic Leap, which is kind of stable, and we have Hardware Manager interface, which is also kind of stable. But uh, I think before we can get to really easy fire and forget scripts, we have to define some stable API, right. maybe some DSL instead of Python to do that, mm -hmm. similar to introspection rules. Yeah, it's an interesting idea, but I, I think it will require a lot more thinking. Okay. The other question I had is, um, like, what do you think is like the main use case for uh, deploy steps? Because like, apparently the, like, the potential is infinite. You can, you can do everything now, but what do you think like operators or users of Ironic will, will, will use this for mostly? So uh, the example I'm, I have here in the blog post, and I want to upstream it actually in Ironic, is inject small files in the final image. For example, uh, I have this request from OpenShift site where they need to, so they, they have chicken and egg problem with network configuration and they don't use cloud, they use ignition, which kind of relies on network already present. 
So uh, they need a way to inject a small network scripts into the boot partition because that's how CoreOS works. Right. Um, people also request, for example, um, grub configuration, the default grub configuration, the kernel parameters to be customized. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned a few potential use cases in the RFEs that I could not post because as I mentioned, the storyboard is down. But um, from Tupo site, I remember requests to configure tune D parameters because these require a reboot. So if you uh, configure them in your first boot script, you have to do another reboot after that. Right. One of uh, the things that, sorry, one, one, while you're talking, I was thinking like how we would use this as well. One of the things that we, for instance, do is um, configure huge pages, which is also we do via kernel parameter. And this requires right. us to reboot the node once more after it has been fully configured. So using a deploy step, we could actually do this earlier and the, the first boot would actually allocate the huge pages already and this would save us one reboot. Right, triple people also have this problem. You have huge pages as well. Mm -hmm. Can it also be used, Dimitri, um, to configure the, the bare metal itself? Um, you know, things like, firm, uh, like bio settings and uh, raid configuration without having to put it into maintenance mode and, and do cleaning or um, you know, basically do it based on the actual um, selection of the system by, I don't know, Metalsmith or Nova. Uh, yes, it's, it's also another use case is to do deploy time rate or deploy time bias. I even think we run that in the CI now. I'm not 100% sure I can check for you, but I think the standalone job in our own actually runs software rate in deploy time. The same can be done with hardware rate, just probably different priority. I see, thank you. So yeah, it's definitely a use case we also consider. Are there more questions for Dimitri? And one final comment maybe, what I really like about the deploy step framework is that's very much uh, an analogy to the clean step framework. That makes it very easy to like grasp the whole idea and like I mean if you if you have written a clean step it's very easy I think to add a deploy step because it follows the very same um, schema. That's yeah, very, that's that's very nice. This this symmetry is very nice. Sometimes it's even the same Python function. Right. Okay. More questions. No? Okay. Thank you very much, Dimitri.